Let's watch this runner here and analyze what's happening during the contact phase of gait. In other words, what's the position of his foot, his ankle, his knee, his hip, his shoulders, and his head. We're going to watch him in slow motion. Look at the position of the foot right here. Can you see how the foot is inverted and we can see the bottom of the sole of the shoe? You'll also notice that he is striding out in front. In other words, his contact is not directly beneath the body, but actually in front of the body. In the next frame, we see as he hits the ground, very little ankle rocker is occurring here. In other words, there's not much dorsiflexion occurring at this ankle. And as we come forward, we see heel rise occurring here, again with just slightly greater than a 90 degree ankle here. Inadequate ankle rocker in this area means he's not recruiting his gluteal musculature appropriately and can't appropriately engage his posterior compartment. So we're looking for a strike underneath the body and somewhat of a dorsiflexion angle at the ankle with a forward lean. Look at the position of the knee. It's in slight flexion here. It remains in slight flexion throughout stance phase or the contact phase and as he's releasing. Now let's look at the position of the hip. Hip is in flexion. Hip is neutral. Hip is in extension at this portion. You'll notice during the propulsion phase here, he's using a great deal of the gastroc soleus musculature. Because his foot needed to invert so far, the knee is passing somewhat to the midline, and when we look at the posterior view, we'll see that he has some collapse of the right side. Let's look at his torso now. He's coming through. and he's holding himself relatively straight, which is a, a good position, although some forward lean, with the body being all on one forward lean from this angle, instead of having this small amount of extension here, would be much more ideal. Now let's look at the position of the head. Notice his head is relatively upright and remains upright. If he kept himself in slight flexion, leaning forward in this area would enable him to drive forward and also give him the um, angulation or lack of angulation appropriate down in the pelvic area to move himself forward. Let's back him up just a little bit. So watch him come forth here now with the left leg. Again, he's somewhat inverted on that side, striding out and striking in front of the body. Knee flexion in this area here some flexion noted at the waist on the right side, sorry, left side, where we don't see nearly as much when he's on the right side. We're just seeing some premature heel rise occurring here. So not much ankle rocker occurring, and we're already beginning to get heel rise so we can propel himself forward. He does look slightly stronger on the left side as we have more of a straight line angulation from the ankle coming up. And he's bringing his arm forward in an attempt to help propel himself forward. The other thing worth noting here is if we examine his stride length, right versus left, you'll see that his right stride length is shorter than his left sided st um, stride length.
Let's look at our same runner from behind. And again, let's pay attention to what's happening during the contact phase. In other words, the angulation of the foot, the lower extremity, the pelvis, the shoulders, and what's going on with the arm. Right off the bat, we're going to notice, watch the right foot. He has a tendency to really strike in some degree of eversion and you can see the motion of the tibia occurring right there moving inward. That motion moving inward is secondary to a forefoot varus deformity and it's partially compensated, not fully compensated, because we can see some calcaneal eversion occurring on this side. There's a great deal of twisting that needs to occur at that level so he can gain purchase under the first metatarsal on the ground so that he can propel himself forward. This mechanical inefficiency is going to be evident as it travels up the kinetic chain into the lower back. Let's watch that. Right there we can see somewhat of a collapse occurring on that right side with the shift of the pelvis. As we move forward we'll notice on the left side we do not see nearly as much translation over to the side. Again, when he hits on the right lower extremity, we can see translation to the side, and it's very evident right there. Look at the amount of angulation occurring here and the amount of angulation that's occurring in the torso on this side to compensate for weakness in this area. Again, look at the attitude of the foot at strike, relatively neutral, somewhat inverted, striking on the outside of the foot, forefoot varus, causes him to collapse to the inside because the center of gravity at the knee is moving medially his torso is forced to move laterally causing this large arcing movement this is costing him a lot of energy in his sprint as he's taking off look at how much rotation much occur in his pelvis for him to get forward at this point in time right here you can see the torque as well as the um, force exerted by the posterior musculature, not only the gastroxoleus, but also the long flexors of the toes, as well as the flexor hallucis. Um, it's difficult to discern, but we're also seeing increased recruitment of the pronius longus on this side in an attempt to stabilize what's going on. We do not see the collapse nearly as bad on the left side, though it is evident, and there's a small amount of pelvic tilting occur. Notice the amount of curvature in the lower extremity here, the amount of tibial varum that's present. Let's watch that left foot as it strikes the ground. Strikes an inversion, remains an inversion, and comes pretty much to neutral. He's got adequate amounts of eversion available in his calcaneus, and it looks like his forefoot varus is more compensated for on the left side than it is on the right side. I also want you to notice that his arm swing is from side to side as he's coming through not forward and backwards. Again, this wastes a lot of energy and this is probably in compensation to this right side collapse and in attempting to help him to get forward somewhat quicker. And this is another excellent place to look at the strike of the foot on this side. Striking way on the outside secondary to the varus, you can also see, already see his body, even his head, tilting in compensation to that. And then him, his knee having to come across. He'll swing his right arm excessively forward in an attempt to help propel himself forward while he brings the left arm back to a greater degree. And he's really reaching with that right arm as he comes forward. Here again we can see the foot strike, very evident, coming through and collapsing on the right side. So here's an example of somebody with appropriate training, strengthening the gluteal musculature, working on descending the first ray, particularly on the right hand side working somewhat on positioning and running technique could be a lot faster than he already is.